Well, brothers and sisters, today in our lesson, we are actually going to talk about the Bible. What does the Bible mean to the church? Within this book contains God's laws, His standards, His doctrines that has held the church together for over 2,000 years. And without this Bible, the church would have never survived. Well, what does this Bible mean to each one of us uh, personally? Well, without God's Word, there would be no way that we could know God, we could know His thoughts, we could know His ways. Isaiah 55, 9 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, my thoughts and my ways are higher than you. And so, again, without the Bible, we'll, we'll never learn who God is and how He thinks. Uh, now, what is it that makes the Bible different from any other religious writings that are out there? And the answer to me is, is the Holy Spirit. When we have when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit dwells within our spirit. And so when we're in the Word, and we're in a right position at that time that we're in the Word, the Holy Spirit connects with our spirit, connects with our mind, so that we're actually uh, translating the scriptures and the words and the meanings and the truths in a way that is is exactly how God wants to reveal His Word to us personally. Uh, it says in, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 10, that God reveals His truth through the Spirit, for the Spirit knows all things. He searches all things. And so, Without the, Bible, without the Holy Spirit helping us to reveal what the truth is in God's Word, this, this all becomes gibberish. It doesn't really have much meaning to us. But with the Spirit, He reveals the truth that's in this, this Word to really change our lives. Now, how you view the Bible determines how much effect it's going to have on your life. If we choose to decide that this Bible is going to be our source of truth, then it's really going to start to shape our belief system. But if we look at the Bible as just a book of stories, of ancient stories, um, or that the Bible does not contain the complete truth, that not every word in the Bible is true, if we look at the Bible that way, it's really going to have a minimal effect on our life. <clears throat> John 8.32 is really the guiding star for us to understand what the Bible truly is to us as God's children. Let's read John 8.32 together. And you will know the truth... And the truth will make you free. Now, what does this book, it says that the truth is in this book, and when we glean that truth from the Holy Spirit, then it actually sets us free. Well, what does it set us free from? To understand that, we need to understand the spiritual realm that we're living in this world right now and the influence those, the spiritual realm has on the way that we think and the way that we, we believe. Uh, 1 John 5.19 says that Satan is, is the one that has power over all evil in this world. He's the evil one that has power over this world. He, ru he rules it spiritually. Ephesians uh, chapter 2 verse 2 tells us that Satan is the prince of the air, and it's a spirit that works in those that are disobedient. 
John 8.44 says that Satan is called the father of lies. And his demons are around us continuously. And now that's true of the church too, of Christians. And probably more so of Christians than maybe, maybe the lost. But those demons are constantly around us to influence our thoughts and the way that we are thinking. Uh, and so if we don't have the truth to set us free from that, we are going to continually believe that deception and we're going to constantly be deceived. And you are deceived if you think on your own that you can know what the truth is. You are deceived. Because uh, Satan is much smarter than that. He's smarter than you. And he knows exactly how to deceive you with, with the lies. Anything out here that does not align with God's wor uh, word is a lie that is not trying to deceive us. <laughs> Thank you. The lies that we take in from this world and the thoughts that's introduced from Satan and his demons, if we let those thoughts camp there, they contaminate our soul. And those thoughts feed the bitterness, the hatred, the jealousy, the anger, the pride, uh, the greed. All of those lies that we're holding into our mind just continually feed into all of those things that has captured our soul and allowed Satan to make a stronghold on our soul. And the, uh, the, the word that contains the truth and with the, the work of the Holy Spirit combined with the truth that's in this word can set our hearts free from all of that so that we are no longer following Satan's agenda. Now, another thing that the truth in this word uh, sets us free from is, is ourselves. There are many Christians that are on a path of self-destruction. And it, it's a, a, and the reason they're on that path is because they are believing the lies of this world. And... Uh, that those lies wants to continue to capture their soul and bring death to their soul. And again, it, it's a combination of the spirit and the truth that's in God's word that can set them free from that path of destruction and put them on a path where, of uh, how God wants them to live. A life, a, a, a live a life of life that Christ can provide us. Um, so, try trying to explain how the truth in this God's word sets us free is hard to explain until you've experienced it. And then, once he does set you free, you understand there's no other way that you could be free from some of the things that had a hold on your life. I want you to stop for a little bit and think about what are some verses that are your favorites, that some of them that you have memorized. And I might even suggest that you might even pause the film for just a little bit and just think about that and restart it again once you have that in your mind. Now do you have those verses in your mind that that has been in the forefront and it's it's the ones that you memorized? Now let me ask you this. Those verses that you memorized how have those verses set you free? What have they set you free from? Think about that. And then maybe spend some time with the Lord contemplating about those verses and how they have affected your life. Um, and that will give you a, a good spiritual indication 
of how the Word has worked in your life up to this point. As we start to study God's Word, and the Holy Spirit starts to reveal more truth to us, it starts to establish a filter over our mind. And this filter filters out the lies that comes from this world and from Satan and sometimes even from our own flesh. And it's replaced with the truth that's in God's Word. So it filters out the lies and allows the truth to enter our minds and our hearts. And when that happens, then those truths guards our mind from all the stinking thinking that has developed in our minds over the many, many years of believing of those lies that try to tear us down. And the more lies we filter out and the more truth that replaces those lies, then we become aware of when Satan is attacking our minds or when a lie is trying to infiltrate our thoughts. And we're able then to realize that and to capture those thoughts so that it will not affect our, our beliefs and our thoughts. And that tells us to do that in Scripture. At 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 5, says that through the obedience of Christ to capture every thought, well, those thoughts it's talking about is those lies that is entering in from the world and, from, and in Satan. And when we can capture them, those lies do not affect our behavior and our attitude. I like to compare that filter of truth that we're talking about to a sieve. Now, just make sure that everybody's on the same page and understands what a sieve is. Basically, a sieve is kind of a screen where you filter through material and to try to separate anything that's not of that material, like flour. You're, you're sieving flour to keep out the, the weeds and all of that. And so the more truth that we glean from God's Word, the finer that sieve becomes in the more and more lies we filter out, in the more and more truth that enters our heart and our spirit and our mind uh, to, to live out the freedom Christ wants us to have. Praise the Lord. That is awesome to be in God's Word and allow those truths to start affecting your heart and your mind that way. Uh, now, by the way, if you're one of those that come up with excuses for not being able to memorize verses, that's the first lie you've got to capture. Um, and so, no matter how hard it is to be able to learn those scriptures by memory, if we continue to discipline ourselves, to be in the Word, and to memorize those verses, the Holy Spirit's going to come alongside, and He's going to empower your mind to be able to memorize and help you to memorize those verses. And, that, and, so, and He does it in a way so that you're not just learning words or memorizing words, but you're memorizing the truth that sinks deeply into your heart and into your soul and those truths then really will change your life forever. So the bottom line here is, brothers and sisters, if we want our heart to line up with God's heart and think like Him, the only route that we can take to do that is the truth that's contained in God's Word. Okay, let me uh, close our time together talking about the Bible and, and the meaning of the Bible and how it does set us free. Uh, let me just uh, lead us in a word of prayer. Father, as we think about the word that you have left with us and the power that's in that word through the Holy Spirit, 
This is the truce. These are the truths that set us free from all the hatred and bitterness and jealousy and pride and anger. The only escape route we truly have is through the love and grace that you have allowed us to have the word, to combine it with the Holy Spirit, to set us free and give us a life, a life that Christ wants to have, for us to have. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I love you, Father. I love you, Lord, with all my heart and my soul and strength. And uh, I just thank you for this times that you've provided for us to, to be together virtually uh, into your word and in your truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, like I said, this will probably be the last Bible study I do. But look for the, uh, the series that I'm going to be teaching on on video about the end times. Take care, brothers and sisters, and, and God bless you.